guys, Kira here again. As promised to talk to you tonight about another embarrassing subject, but it's something that happens to women our age and that's the subject of menopause. <laughs> yes, menopause. Many of you watching this channel have probably already started experiencing it. If you haven't, you will eventually. But what exactly is menopause? How do you know when you're in it? Well, many, many women, before they actually experience official menopause, experience a period of time called perimenopause, and that happens before menopause becomes official. The average age for perimenopause to start is 40, 51, sorry, but it can start in your late 40s. It can last for anywhere between two to eight years. And the average amount of years before menopause becomes official is four years. So it gives you some time to get ready for real menopause. And the nice thing is when real menopause comes and is finished, you know, there's an end in sight. But um, so you go through perimenopause and then when you have officially had 12 months period free, then you are by definition in menopause. Once you're actually in menopause, your symptoms can last for between four and five years. Um, certain health conditions can bring on early menopause, such as um, rheumatoid arthritis, HIV, being HIV positive, having a thyroid disease, or having um, chronic fatigue can actually cause an early onset of menopause. And of course, many of us have early menopause brought on surgically as I did when I was 44 by having a hysterectomy and or an oophorectomy, having all your works removed. So there are lots of different signs and symptoms that you'll suffer from during menopause and perimenopause. A lot of those, one of the ones most people are most common with, um, familiar with and know the most about is the hot flashes. And if you haven't had them and you're wondering, hmm, I wonder, I feel kind of warm today. No, when you go through hot flashes, you'll know it. Uh, I went through mine when I used to work at a school and um, when one would hit, it was not uncommon to see me run through the hallway, run to the cafeteria, open the walk-in freezer and stand there until I was cooled down. Uh, they, you'll know when you have them. And the hot flashes can also go hand in hand with night sweats. You can just wake up drenched in sweat. If you have a, a male partner in life or any partner in life who's with you while you're going through this. This will be good for them to know too, all of this. You will experience uneven and missed periods during that time. But again, until you've missed 12 in a row, 12 consecutive months, you're not actually in menopause. You can suffer from insomnia, mood swings, depression, fatigue, crankiness, dry skin, um, a racing heart, headaches, joint and muscle aches and pains. Your libido can be lowered, lower sex drive. You're just not that interested in it anymore. And part of the reason for that too is not just the lack of hormones, but vaginal dryness. And you can also have thinning hair, dry skin, and sagging breasts. Woohoo! So much to look forward to, right? Hey, it's better than the alternative, right? <laughs> Getting older is better than the alternative. So what are some of the things you can do? Well, for hot flashes, you can drink some nice cold water. Mm, more ice than water is even better. Um, sit or sleep near a fan. <laughs> Always carry a fan with you. I never go anywhere without one, and I don't even have hot flashes anymore, but I still don't go anywhere without one. And dress in layers always. Whether the weather tells you to or not, just dress in layers. So if you get too hot, you can start stripping down. So what about the vaginal dryness? If you're suffering from that, uh, you can use an over-the-counter vaginal lube. I think like KY jelly and there's all different kinds. Or a moisturizer that's also advertised for vaginal dryness and is sold over-the-counter. 
Now, one of the serious side effects from uh, symptoms during menopause is loss of bone strength, and that's a biggie. And you can help minimize that by exercising, and the best exercise for that is walking. It's a weight-bearing exercise, and it'll help your bones um, get stronger and keep them from weakening so much and um that will also help you sleep better and it also helps with disease and diabetes of course if you're walking you're also going to have a weak pelvic floor you know things inside are just kind of hanging down that's why we get the the incontinence the light bladder leakage and you can even experience um, a problem with your your bowels dropping lower and and you feel like you always have to go Best thing you can do for that is kegels, kegels, kegels. Well, I'm doing mine while I'm sitting here. Can you tell? No. Kegels, ladies, kegels, kegels, kegels. And another wonderful thing you can do for yourself all during menopause is no smoking. Mm -mm. Well, you shouldn't do that anyway. But smoking can cause early menopause and it can make your hot flashes even worse. So no smoking, ladies. So some of the more serious things, those are a lot of the symptoms you experience, but the bone loss is, is a biggie. And you'll, you'll want to talk to your, your gynecologist about that. They might be able to put you on some medication for that. You want to make sure you eat foods rich in calcium. You want to make sure you get vitamin D. Um, you can get osteopenia before you get osteoporosis. And that's a warning sign that you need to start walking, building up your, your bone strength and enriching your your vitamin D either through supplements or the best source being out in the sun and your calcium intake needs to go up. Um, if you're on a hormone replacement therapy, you risk heart disease. So that's something you want to think about as well. Uh, when we start talking about hormone replacement therapy, of course, you're going to suffer from, you, you may suffer from bladder and bowel control issues. You're just not going to have as much control as you used to you'll have a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. And of course, you're gonna have more wrinkles, partly just because you're getting older, partly because your skin is getting drier, and partly because you're just producing, you're not producing that estrogen and you're not producing enough collagen anymore. You might also suffer from poor muscle power and tone, and you may suffer from some weakened vision. Again, also just kind of part of aging. So what are some things you can do? Well, of course, you can have hormone replacement therapy. Uh, I did that right after my induced menopause through hysterectomy. It wasn't for me. I got off of it after four days, but that replaces the estrogen that you no longer produce enough of, and it can help with hot flashes, vaginal symptoms, um, and bone strength. But you do want to take the lowest dosage possible for the shortest time possible, and that's something you need to talk to your doctor about. There's also topical hormone therapy. That's a cream, an insert, or a gel that you actually use inside your vagina, and that can help with the dryness and the vaginal symptoms. There are non-hormonal meds that have been shown to help. For example, Paxil can help you with your hot flashes. Who knew? It's gonna help you with your mood too, but it's gonna help you with your hot flashes. And as I said before, vitamin D supplements and being out in the sun will help your bones. And then there are them some drugs called SERMs, and that stands for Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulators, and they can help your body use the estrogen that it is still producing to give you back more of what you had when you had more estrogen production. There are also some natural things you might want to try for relief, and one of those is red, and again, these are not proven as far as, you know, Western medicine a lot of times the big pharma, big farm company won't uh, won't ever let these things be approved because they want to sell you their drugs. But red clover extract may help, and black cohosh, uh, black cohosh can really help with the sleep. Uh, I I use that at night. It helps with sleep and it helps with um, the night sweats. Um, you can get a lot of information, and I will post some links below, but you can get a lot of information at healthline.com slash nutrition slash. Uh, go on there and search through things about naturally treating menopause. There's a couple of great Facebook groups that you can get into for a little more lighthearted, really for some support, but some ideas and, 
Uh, one is called the menopause clause, like the Santa Claus, C-L-A-U-S-E, the menopause clause. And, and another one is simply called menopause support group. Um, something else of interest is that there is a newly approved test and it's called the PICO AMH ELISA. AMH stands for anti-mullerian hormone. And by getting this test, you can actually see if you're about to go into menopause or if you're already in it. That's only been available recently, so that's something you might want to ask your doctor about as well. And then another natural thing that a lot of people are into, oh, and, and you know, when I was talking about take your calcium, like this is calcium with magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D. I, I personally have very weak bones and I have osteopenia, so I need to really make sure I do that. And then I also take an extra vitamin D just because, especially in this um, winter and then in the spring here in Arizona when I can't get out, there's not as much sun. And some extra potassium and that can help with things like leg cramps and other things at night. Just have a big bottle of lotion around, some nice cocoa butter or shea or some kind of really nice lotion. Just buy some cheap lotion if you want because you're going to use a lot of it because you will have... You will get drier skin without all that estrogen. No matter what weather you live in, you will get drier, flakier skin. So you're gonna to wanna to have that kind of stuff around. Now, another great way to help with menopause symptoms, a lot of people use essential oils. Um, I personally used to use them for everything, but a lot of people do like to use those. And there are five oils in particular that can really help you with your symptoms and the first one is called um, clary sage clary sage and that can help you with the hot flashes you can put three drops diluted with any kind of oil you want coconut oil whatever three drops across the back of your neck or on your feet and that can really help you with hot flashes another great one to always have around and this can help with allergies and other things too but is your uh, basic peppermint peppermint oil uh, helps with hot flashes, can help with cramping. And you can put a couple drops on a tissue or a cotton ball and just breathe it in. Or if you don't have any cotton around, just breathe it in from your bottle. That can also help cool you down if you put it across the back of your neck or your forehead. Lavender. Lavender helps balance hormones, can help balance hormones, and it can help soothe the discomfort you've got down there, the area between your vagina and your anus. <laughs> You, you might have some discomfort there because of the, the vaginal symptoms you're going to have. And um, having some lavender around to help with that is really good because you can make a, a, a nice cold compress with some cold water and a soft cloth. And, and then you can put a couple of drops of uh, lavender oil on there and actually apply it to the area. It's really gonna help help relieve that and don't leave it on for longer than 30 minutes at a time is what they suggest. You also can use aromatherapy in a diffuser next to your bed. Uh, it'll help you with sleep, it'll keep you calmer. Now for the dry skin and hormonal changes, geranium oil, and I don't have, I can't find my bottle of geranium oil, it's around here somewhere, but I don't know where it is. But geranium oil um, can help hormonal changes you sniff in a couple of drops of that again in a in a tissue or a cotton ball and then geranium oil can also help with dry skin it can help a lot so you can put some drops in your bath or you can put some drops in your into your lotion that you're using for your body and your skin and the geranium can really help with that and then basil basil oil helps improve can can help improve and increase estrogen production it can help balance out your mood. You can also use that as aromatherapy. Um, and you can also, it can also help with hot flashes on the back of your neck again. And the last oil that's really helpful during menopause is citrus. And it just, citrus can just kind of help all around lifting your mood and helping you experience fewer physical symptoms. And there different oil companies have different brands. But that's just something you might want to try if you get a chance. And again, drink lots of water. Cool water, keep a fan handy all the time. Fan next to your bed. That was a bone of contention with my ex-husband and myself because I always needed a fan to sleep and he couldn't sleep with a fan on. 
Guys, support your women through menopause. So I will post some information. And this is something you, you will go through. We all have to go through it. So just have to face it, find best ways to deal with it. Some people only experience a short menopause and they experience barely any perimenopause. Hopefully that'll be the case for you. That'd be great. But keep in mind while you're going through all this, as annoying as it may be, it's part of getting older. And you know, as I always say, getting older is better than the alternative. Be sure to subscribe, watch my videos. I try to put one out each week. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you want an, some notification when a new video is posted. And until next time, oh, post in the comments below uh, uh, what kind of topic you'd like to see next, next week or in the weeks coming up. So take care, everybody. Bye.